Hey guys, today I wanted to give you a quick user guide on the new iPhone 10 because as we know, older iPhones have a home button and this one does not. Now with a home button, there was a bunch of actions like taking screenshots, going into the multitasker app. I mean, so many actions were performed around the home button, including Apple Pay. So how do you do all that? on an iPhone 10. Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's get started. First, I want to talk about a very cool feature that's unique to the iPhone 10 right now, and that is the tap to wake. When your device is at sleep, you have it next to you on your nightstand. You can tap it simply to wake it up. It'll detect you, swipe up, and you're in. Now, with the lack of a home button, you may be wondering, how do you take a screenshot on the iPhone 10? Well, it's going to be volume up and power. Just like that. You can tap, edit your photo or your screenshot, and you're done. That's it. Now going into the app switcher, it's going to require a long swipe up and hold just like this in order to go into your multitasker. Now if the app switcher has a bunch of apps open and you want to quit those apps, if you swipe up, it's not going to kill the application. It's just going to bring you home. So what you have to do is tap, bring up to the multitasker by swiping up, tap and hold, and then you can swipe up and quit all applications that are running. You may be wondering, well, if I have to do the app switcher like this, that takes a lot of time and just, it just really isn't convenient. Well, Apple added a really cool gesture to the function bar down here, which if you swipe to the right or the left, wherever the applications are at, it's gonna go backwards and forwards between applications. So it's pretty cool. You can also do it like that and bring up the multitasker, bring it back down, just like that. Now on older iPhones, swiping from the bottom will bring up the control center. On the new iPhone, swiping up means you go back home. So if I go into Safari, swipe up, it brings me home. So how do you bring down Control Center? See these widgets up here? Swipe. Now one hand that you use, it's a little uh, off on this device because it's not a large device, a very large device. I can barely reach it, but if I'm using it one-handed, I can sort of do this and get to the control center just like that. But that is how you do it on the new iPhone 10. Now with the new iPhone 10, the side button, which is the new name for the sleep wake button, Apple took some of the home button gestures and put them on the side. So long press of the power button gives you Siri. So if a long press gives you Siri, how do you power off your iPhone? Well, long press both side and volume down and you get the new slide to power off menu. Now you can do this with the up or down volume. You also have a system wide button right down here where you can just simply shut down your iPhone. So that's how you do it. Now in order to use Apple Pay on the iPhone 10, Apple used the side button again, double tap and it would bring the Apple Pay system up. So if I do this, double press, you see their Apple Pay comes up and I can just simply pay with it because of course Face ID will recognize what's happening. So that is how you pay with Apple Pay on the iPhone 10. Now you're probably wondering if you swipe from here to bring down the control center, how do you do notification center? Well, you can swipe anywhere else instead of the right side. So you swipe in the center or you can swipe on the left. It doesn't really matter. As long as you don't swipe on the right, you get notification center. And when someone calls you, let's say someone calls you, you answer the call. Once you answer the call, let's say you go home because you're doing something else while you're on the phone call. How do you get back to the phone screen? Well, you see there how the clock turned green? Simply tap it and you're back. By the way, that works the same way for any other application that you're using uh, while it's running in the background, like GPS. Let's say you're using Google Maps. You can go home and then tap on the clock. It'll show green or blue or red color, depending on the application. You can just simply go back to the application just like that. Now, on older iPhones, if you double tap the home button, you get reachability, which brings the screen down on your iPhone. But no home button here means, how do we do it? General, accessibilities, and reachability. You want to toggle it on, it's going to be off by default. Let's say you're in Safari, swipe on the bottom of the screen towards the bottom. Just like that. Do it again, swipe up to bring it back, swipe down, swipe up. So it's not very practical. I don't think I'm going to use reachability much on the iPhone 10, but it is there. Now, one thing I did want to point out is Face ID is constantly there, so you can't really avoid it when you go to purchase an application. Uh, I got this question several times. So if you go to purchase an application, it's going to require a double press of the power button to confirm that you do want to purchase because if you click purchase by accident, Face ID is going to be, uh, you know, authenticating that right away and you may be making purchases by accident. So double tap, Face ID, boom. I want to show you that one more time. Let's go ahead and uh, select another application here. If I double tap, look at the cool animation, by the way, for Touch ID or Face ID. So right there it is, boom. See that? Pretty cool. Anyway, guys, that about brings an end to this video. Just a quick user guide. 
Hopefully these tips will help you with your new iPhone 10. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any that you know that I didn't show in this video. It's been I Device Help. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you real soon. Peace.